Hi, everyone, again, thank you so much for joining in on our talk today. I'm super excited to be introducing Christine, who is the owner and designer of Applicus Row, which is an amazing jewelry company here in San Francisco. And she and I have gone way back. We met while, and she is always inspiring me to do different things because she is you are, I feel like, so driven, but you also have so many fun, amazing things to do for designers um, and bring community together. And I, and I love that so much. Um, and you always invite me, so I'm always having fun with that. <laughs> um, but um, just a little bit about Join and a little about me really quickly. So Join is um, a collective of American designers here in the U.S. Um, and we are... Um, we do pop-ups, trade shows, and events, and of course, things like this, such as uh, the joint talks, or trying to bring in more small businesses and more people together so that we can be able to um, talk more about you know, our experiences and obviously bring that up to you. And me, myself, I am Melanie Abrantes, and I am a designer here in Oakland, California, and I make cork and wood products for the home essentially. So I am a wood turner and maker, and I also run my business um, here as well. So that's a little bit about me. All right, Christine, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I have a jewelry line called Abacus Row. Um, it's based here in San Francisco. We operate out of a studio in Nob Hill, um, sort of Nob Hill, Chinatown area. Um, the line is predominantly beaded work, so it's just really minimal, delicate leaning beaded work. It's um, particularly focused on a very specific kind of jewelry, um, which I think has lent itself to be a kind of difficult medium to photograph. So I think this should be hopefully helpful to a lot of people in terms of like how we think about photographing product, product that moves every time you touch it, um, little objects, different kind of shines and chains. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And I feel like your photography does a really good job of showcasing um, your product and it is really delicate and it's something that I feel like would generally be really hard to, to capture, but you do a really great job of it. So I was really excited to, to know that you'd be on board to talk to us about it, especially your own product photography. Um, and we chatted about this a little bit beforehand because we were both like, oh, our product photography is so different. So I think it'll be really great to kind of see the contrast of what it's like to obviously photograph something a lot smaller. Your jewelry is a lot smaller than my product itself. And then as well as being able to photograph something where, um, you know, you have to have a lot of light to be able, and you have to, I know you use tweezers as some of the things you do. So like the amount of small things that you have to be able to photograph um, and do it so well is really impressive. Um, that being said, um, we can, so for this specific talk, what we're gonna be doing today is, um, I'm obviously, we're gonna be chatting a little bit about photography and um, you know, the reasons why you wanna do photography, how, Christine specifically does her photography at home, especially for her products. And then, um, and she's gonna show us a little bit about that. So um, I'm gonna jump into a couple of questions to kind of get us started. And then from there, she's gonna be able to do a little workshop of showing her behind the scenes of how she does her product photography, uh, which I think will be really helpful for a lot of you. Yeah, and just full disclaimer, neither of us are like, neither neither of us are like professional photographers or expert photographers in any way. And I think the, the concept behind having this sort of talk is just like as general makers, as general designers, people who run their own businesses and wear a lot of hats, like what hats we use and how we get through and make the most of time, resources, whatever it may be. So um, if you're going in thinking this is going to be particularly technical, it's not. It's uh, not at all. No, but I think that's stuff. better that way. <laughs> Just making, making it happen and making it still look good and doing, yeah, working with the resources that you have. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is 
perfect for, for I think what, where we're trying to go because it's very true. I feel like, yeah, we are not experts. We are not photographers, but I do think that, um, that I, you know, for what you do do it, it, I think it works perfectly to be able to, you know, throw those images online and, and have a very cohesive look, which I think is, you know, number one is your brand image and making sure that looks great. Um, okay. So, just to begin our conversation, um, why do you do photo shoots? Like, what is the purpose of a photo shoot for you and doing photography for you? So there's a range of photography that we do. We do some of it I do personally myself, and then there's some where we do like proper photo shoots. Um, I use photography largely for line sheets and for the website, and I also use them for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. And that takes any variety of form, of like be it digital and something living on a website or just a digital catalog right. to also just like printing postcards, printing printouts and brochures. So for our wholesale business, we need white backdrop product photos for our line sheets. So we do, we take a photo of every single product we have and in every single variant. And if you're familiar with our line, we have a lot of variants typically yeah. for, for any single necklace, we might have six color options. So we have an image for every single one of those on white backdrop. And then typically mm -hmm. we also do photo shoots for just like styled ones that are meant to just highlight the product and give sort of the feel of whatever mood it is for that collection that we want to evoke. Um, mm -hmm. And then ideally we also have a third kind of photo, which is a modeled photo so that people understand, get an idea of how it looks like on body. Um, so there are three different kinds of photos that we try to get out of it in terms of the function, um, mm -hmm. but it takes, it takes its life in variety of forms, be it like print, um, like I have a bunch of resources here. Like we have print for postcards, we have foldouts. Like here's a postcard of something. Right. Here's yeah. A, like a more extensive foldout, which typically goes to like usually to our stockists or some of our better customers who you know shop with us frequently and said we want to share you know some of the work we've done that I think gets lost oftentimes. Like a lot of photo shoots can. You might see one or two photos, but you don't get to see a full spread. So we right. like to have print for that purpose. Um, and then line shoots, which I think, you know, is obviously really basic um, for anyone new who's like new to wholesale, you know, you, you can lay it out in a variety of forms, but it's nice to have a full view of everything. <laughs> right. It's like yeah. a full view, size, like small, large, every single color. So yeah, we do it in print and then all of those, you know, there are multiple lives for them. So it lives in print on a line sheet. But those are the exact same photos that I use for the website as well. Right. Yeah. And to be honest, I mean, we had a little bit, um, we talked a little bit about this, but like currently right now, because of COVID and what's happening, like how everyone's online and no one's in person anymore, like photography is so, so important. And I feel like, to be honest, um, like if you're able to create the mood and the feeling of your photos that it would in, like evoke in person, like that is obviously the most ideal currently because none of us are able to see anything and we're all buying online. And so, yeah, that like photography is so, so important. I can't, I cannot say that enough for so many things. Cause like you just explained to us, it is used for a variation of different, you know, things. Um, and I think, so I did want to kind of go into, um, so we talked about what you actually use these images for. And I think that's great. Um, and I was wondering, like, how do you actually plan these shoots? Like, especially because, so let's dive a little bit into, I guess, the type of photography. So um, I, I know that Christine does a lot of photography with photographers that are a little bit more larger. And these are more of like your style shots. I mean, that's what I call it for my own. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, so it's like your styled shots, and this is what you, I'm assuming, use for like your catalogs, maybe your press, and all those like big moments. Um, and then you obviously have your product photography, which is, um, you know, your product on white or however you want to style it. Um, how do you plan the different types of photography shoots? And um, I guess tell us about the process itself. <laughs> I'm a 
I'm a pretty bad procrastinator, so a lot of it happens last minute. Um, yeah, honestly, I will, that's all we're looking for, though. So yeah, let us know how it goes. But the planning, you know, the planning as far as like product photography, the most important part of that is obviously making sure you have all of your samples ready. And I just need, I know that I, I need from basically when I need to present the photo um, to when I need to shoot it. I know that I need three days. Um, so that fast, that's wild. I, yeah, so I do, I take all the photos, but I send the photos out for, um, for post-production just to speed it up because I can't do it fast enough. Um, okay. And it's, it's much more consistent. So that's one element where I like, you know, eliminates a good, a good amount of work. Um, and but yeah, I just, you, once, you, if I'm within a three day span of like, I need to just shove it in a line sheet and send it out, then I, if I have three days in advance, I can get it done. My setup is already, I've already calibrated everything for my setup. So once you get your setup, you know exactly what you need to do. Um, you know, I have this studio that's like big, spacious studio in, in San Francisco, but I still take my photos at home because I know that everything I need is there and it's, the light has been calibrated. Like, you're right, you really calibrated, but it's like tea. <laughs> everything I've done in terms of this this ridiculous setup that I've been using for basically eight years now. It's like ev every single material I use is still the same from when I first started eight years ago, and it's gotten a little bit better. And that's you know some of it's a little bit better in terms of just technique and um, approach and just making small modifications. But the basics of what I do is still exactly the same from when I first started and like wanted to have a website and put some photos up. So I have, a, I brought it for you, Melanie, cause it's, it's so embarrassing. Um, no. <laughs> the, oh, I said it's really embarrassing. It's like really amateur. You can buy these things, obviously. I made mine from scratch, like in, you know, 2012, I was Googling like how to, you know, how to shoot white product product on white backgrounds and put together like found this one posting that was like basically informed everything that I did and it was uh -huh. guided me on how to build a little like light box like a little box and then to like cut out these holes in fabric and so I was like okay well I need a square cardboard box so I went shopping at Crate and Barrel uh -huh. and bought something anything so that i could ask for a gift box <laughs> and i bought a rolling pin which clearly didn't fit in this but i still asked for it <laughs> but this is a square oh, box it. and that's how you and take I, all your product photography is I mean, in the I got, it's so, you know pretty barrel um yeah, yeah i still do it this, this outrageous little thing like look at this old like masking tape on it what is, like, what is the on side. sides of it fabrics to diffuse the light so like that's essentially what a you know that's essentially what these these little light white boxes i don't even know the proper name for honestly i don't even call it light box or a white box um but basically what you want to do is just diffuse the light and so you cut out all these holes right from the top and all the sides mm -hmm. to allow light in that you basically will direct the light into obviously um and then the front is like where you take Take a little photos, and then you know, as you learn, you make little modifications. This is like a little modification on it. Um, oh my god! <laughs> and, you know, I think everyone thinks they need a really fancy camera, and I don't use a fancy like I had a um, digital SLR that I used to primarily use, and I don't use it for this. Though I don't use it for my product photography. I use this, like very basic point and shoot. Um, because our, my objects are so small that the, the lens actually on a digital SLR is like cumbersome and actually gets in the way. So this right. is like much more maneuverable. Either way, this is the box, okay? It's like, it's, it's still pretty embarrassing, but I'm like also very proud of it because it's like eight years going and it was, you know. No, that's amazing. I mean, talk about- It cost about me a rolling pin, but I use that rolling pin in the kitchen, so it's great. Um, There's a rolling pin? What? I bought a rolling pin so I could ask for a gift box. Oh. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I think I it's rude to just ask for things. That's how you were able to just go in there and like ask for something for free. All right. Um, um, 
Uh, well, okay, that is, I love that you were able to bring that uh, <laughs> that out and show us exactly how you were able to do your prop photography. Can I can you share, share the full setup too. It's like, it gets more embarrassing. Well, it yeah. just looks like, it, it looks really confusing, honestly, but it's, you basically have to rig it up. Um, and they, let's see here. Okay. That's it. Okay, that's in my living room. Oh my god. Like okay. in a tiny corner of the living room. And I have these flood clamp lights that basically feed in on both sides and then on the top. And then there's, you know, I, I shoot it when there's like full daylight. I've tried to shoot at night and it's fine, but it's actually much yeah. better in natural daylight as well. Um, <laughs> and then I sit on that tiny little milk stool. Um, uh huh. Yeah, and then I just, I shoot from there. Basically, you just like turn on all the lamps, turn them off between shots. Otherwise, it gets way too hot. Right. Um, and these and are these lamps these again? Say that again? What kind of lamps are these again? They're, you get them at a hardware store. Um, you just buy these at a hardware store. They're like these little clamp on flood lamps. So like I've got those two benches on the side just to have something to clamp onto. And then I have like, actually there's a tripod standing on the back side of that chair to uh -huh. clamp this other light to feed in on the top. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's awful looking. Wait, can you, show us, um, can you show us what a finished image would look like so we can kind of see? Yes. So let's see, finished image. Um, a finished image looks like this. There you go. Okay, yeah. So it's just so like a pair of our earrings. It's like pretty representative. Yeah, yeah that's pretty freaking amazing, Christine, that that little <laughs> notepad that was this <laughs> little <laughs> was able to create this. <laughs> you know, and, and even though, you know, I put out that disclaimer that it's like, you know, we're not experts here, but the right. one thing that you can be pretty certain of, is, especially if you do this, you know, especially if you're really dedicated to your product, like you will be the expert at shooting your own product. Like nobody knows the needs right. that your product or that like what you need to highlight with your product, what you need to like, what little elements you want to capture or what's difficult about it in terms of like layout, all of that stuff. So that's the one thing is like, it's not that easy actually to just like hand product off and assume that somebody's going to do it better than you just because you're not a photographer. Know, and, but the and reality that, is like, you know, you know what you need to showcase. In that yeah. Product. Yeah. And I know that, um, well, so obviously that makes a lot of sense because you do photography. I mean, sorry, you do jewelry with your photography. So, you know, your setup is pretty small. Like when I do my own photography, actually, I don't do any of my photography. <laughs> I am so like I am I commend you and to be honest I'm trying to actually probably especially now begin because I I'm always adding new products especially with like um yeah. I'm doing a product launch tomorrow check it out but uh, when I am doing my product launches and everything I need to shoot everything on white first because I have to make sure that all the images that are on my site look the same because if they don't it 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 irks me personally, <laughs> but it also like, it just doesn't look cohesive and it doesn't look professional. And there's yeah. something about having like this same exact look for every image, especially when you're on a site. Um, it just feels really nice. And also it's just, you need these on white images for so many things. So it is so important to, to get that done correctly. Um, but I am very impressed because I work with a photographer, her name's Melanie Riccardi. Yes, we have the same first name, <laughs> but um, we have been working together since 2012 and she does all my product photography for the most part. Um, this year has been different. I've worked with a couple of other photographers and every time I'm always just like, like, oh, it's not exactly what I want. Oh, this is not, this is not perfect, but I have to, obviously we have to deal with what's happening. She lives in LA now, so I wasn't able to go down there for a shoot this year, but, um, but yeah, but it's, it's definitely its own thing. And I need to kind of bring in my own, like on white photos in house. And it's, it's, I love that that is your setup because it makes it, feels so less intimidating because the setup that they have at, at my photographers is like, you know, C stands, giant, you know, on white background. Yes. 
it's like so much more intense and like the idea of investing that much just for doing photography is is really intimidating but it's good to know that it's not not if I think I can do it I mean it's but you could do it with the CCN as well. I mean, part of it are just avoiding the CCN. You can figure out the elements that you need. It's yeah. it to the scale that you need it. The you know the the constraints that I have with this little box. I mean, it's great for the earrings and smaller products, but I have necklaces that are thirty inches long and stretch fifteen inches. This box is you know. I think exactly 15 inches or 14 inches. Mm -hmm. So there's some product I can't actually like, have to like maneuver in a very specific way right. to, to like document it properly. And you do some of that also, you know, you also probably, I probably also don't want it just like fully laid out because on a, on a line sheet and then also on a website, there's just too much negative space. And so you have right. to figure out how to, how to manipulate it a little bit and I can show you what I mean with that just because yeah I'd be curious it yeah. is. I feel like a lot of this is so, thinking about it but we can actually see imagery which I think would be helpful so like this is our Dorado necklace like mm -hmm. laying it straight out just like wouldn't make sense on a line sheet it's not very helpful no. capturing you know for a lot of jewelry websites or a lot of jewelry lines period, there might be a pendant. And so there's something, there's like a very focal point that you might take an image of and right. it doesn't work for our jewelry. Um, the way, you know, the, the entire line Abacus Row is like largely about like the entirety of the piece. Like there is no strong focal point at any one specific area usually for most of our pieces. So you kind of have to capture it full entirety. And so something like this is like, you figure out how to drape it and this took a really long time, as basic as it is now for us, like to lay a piece, to lay this piece of jewelry out to look like that. Mm -hmm. um, really depends, like some cord is more finicky and doesn't sit that way. Right. Yeah, so it's silk cord and then these are like gold filled beads at the bottom and at the very ends. And just getting it to sit properly, mm -hmm. you know, is, it's, it's something you work with, I think, continually and over and over, and you'll update photos. You take them once and you might, you know, two, three years later, decide you figured out a better way to capture it, and then you, you do all of them. And the nice thing about doing at least one portion of the kinds of photos you need in-house is that, you know, we have, we have like 400 speed. We have some absurd number of speeds, oh, right? Awesome. And we have an image for every single one. And it's just right. too, it's too expensive. It's too expensive to hire somebody else to do it. Um, you know, we put the money out and basically the post-production stuff. So it's like, and, you and take the photo, I edit it to some degree, and then I farm it out. And right. it comes back typically, typically comes back in 24 hours. There are a lot of these places that do it. And it, sometimes it's overnight because they're, they're offshore. Like right. a lot of these companies like are based here, but really just farm it out to Vietnam, honestly. That's where ours go. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that next. Like, who do you use to actually farm it out? But you do abroad. Yeah, it's this company called Pixels. I think they're based here or in San Diego. I don't, I don't recall anymore. But I had a friend that had recommended them, and mm -hmm. so I started using it. And I've used it for the past probably three or four years, and it helped a lot because when I like, I can use Photoshop, but I'm pretty amateur at it. And mm -hmm. there were all these tricks that I was doing that isn't how other studios would do it and right. it worked for me, but it also took a really, really long time. So mm -hmm. this is just like, it's a huge time saver. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, that is, I feel like most, I mean, most photographers even do do that themselves. So that makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm glad you shared that because that is an, an added on amount of time that sometimes it can be done so inexpensively with someone else and using those resources to obviously be able to do that. Um, I did want to tap, or I did want to talk for our, bleh. I did want us to talk a little bit about um, your actual styled shoots, because I think a lot of us are really curious how you do that. And I could even talk about my own as well, because I do feel like it is a scenario or situation where a lot of us are really curious on how, you know, like you're able to kind of um, come up with the theme and come up with how you find your photographers. Um, because I do have to say, even though we are here on this talk talking about how you can do it yourself, if this isn't something that you know that you're not good at, 
hire someone or in some instances, you know, especially when you're brand new and you maybe not, don't have a ton of money to help out with that, do a trade or work out some sort of way for you to, you know, obviously um, bargain and figure out the best way that would make sense for your, your budget. But like photography, I, like I said, I'm saying this repeatedly, it is so important. So like, especially now, so this is something that I highly recommend. And I personally, I, um, I work with photographers and I also work with a stylist and not on my on white products, but definitely for my bigger production shots. And I do that only once a year. So it is a budget that I have laid out for one time a year. And I, I actually plan mine out for probably maybe like, I want to say five to six months in advance. <laughs> That's really it's really and it's not like I'm thinking about it every day but like I come up with a concept and then from there I like break it down to what exactly and I only get six shots out of this very very intense photo shoot so it's not even like it's like this giant like I get 20 30 40 shots um, it's just very very stylized six shots and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I think about my catalog that's number one so I think about what I want to talk about and then I think about how what products were obviously going to be launching and a lot of the times it's like it starts off with one but then I'm able to add on to that because I already have an idea of what I want to be photographing um, and then from there yeah it just and then I'm able to kind of use that also for my own press which is huge because I don't have a PR team I literally email people about a press release <laughs> and I tell them like check out my work you know because that's essentially what you have to do is like if you're advocating for yourself like and you don't have a huge budget if you do it yourself it's really important um, and then like everything that you just said like catalog line sheet um, new images once a year that's all I do I don't update my site more than that <laughs> and then um, unless there's new product but like for the most part it's just yeah it's a one-time spend but I know Christine is totally different so tell us about how often you do your photo shoots and how often you update your site and all that kind of stuff you pretty often um, yeah, I know you're so good. You're also I have to say you're so good at the marketing end of like being really on top of it. Oh, voices and making giving your products the focus that they deserve. It's like the one thing that I'm always like, oh, I gotta be like, gotta be better, gotta be, better, be like Melanie. Um, well, I definitely don't have 400 SKUs. I think that's the difference. <laughs> Yeah, so we release probably, um, we do at least two new collections a year. Oftentimes there's like little smatterings of updates here and there for our existing collections. We don't, you accumulate 400 SKUs for many years. No, I mean, when you don't let go of all of your collections because we don't, we didn't design on trend. Um, it's like not, not our intention to most of it. Like we're happy with, we let it live its life for as long as we can handle looking at it mm -hmm. um, sometimes we you know there are some collections that I'm not tired of but I do think like I had intended for it to only be around for a short period of time right every time I do a release um, I, I do all of the photography so we do the white background or the white background photography but then we also do styled photography um, so I usually go in the specific order of like white background product photography number one that's right. like the primary, like primary need. No, and, in then, you and then if it intends to live on the website and if you've been on our website, we don't actually highlight front and center, just those, those images. We highlight our like styled images. Mm -hmm. And so we want those to kind of like have a look and feel that can be cohesive with everything else in the collection right. or in the line. So that when you're on the website, it's not like jarring from item to item, but but each one is still done pretty differently. Um, so when I plan it, I don't give very much time. I'm usually operating on pretty tight timelines and I work really well under pressure. I mean, it's part of the procrastination problem is that it comes to me really late. Like it I feel comes like most to me, creatives are like that too though. <laughs> it comes to me like sometimes like literally an hour before shoot so like i will be scrambling in the morning know that the shoot starts at 10 a.m and i'll be finishing sample production at my desk at like 8 30 
nine and just thinking like I've got an hour to get this figured out and usually something will come. I always have a backup that's like a, we can do this and it's right. something boring and something basic, but we'll like, I can work with because I have a, you end up collecting over time too, just like materials that you think complement your product or highlight your product that don't, I mean, I, that I, feel and look beautiful, but do not outshine what you make. Yes. And that is so um, hard. And especially if you like, um, like I said, really, yeah, yeah, like, uh, getting the products that around your product to, to like, obviously lift it up to be the star. Yes. But if it's something that is more beautiful than the actual product, they're going to focus on that. And that's not the yeah. part of, you know, that's not what you're trying to do. So that's actually really true when you're, when you're purchasing props, right. Or you're using sure. those kinds of props. Yeah. And when you're styling them, because the reality is like, it's not that hard to make a really beautiful photo. Like I know how to run around and you know, it's, it's not, it's like right. not hard to find really Especially beautiful products and put them all together and create like abundance or create like extreme minimalism. Like that's not difficult. The difficult part is like figuring out how you balance all those things and make your product front and center. Yeah, um, definitely. And like, that's, that's always the primary goal. And so I've accumulated, I buy the little things here and there that I think, oh, this will support the jewelry. And it's, it's hard because you actually need to find things that are like, help prop it up or just like have a certain sort of material fluidity at least for our stuff it's like mm -hmm. there's got to be texture and volume but the texture right. can't be like can't feel like it's conflicting with the product um it can be different but it just can't be harsh uh so we work with a variety of different materials and some of them sometimes it's really obvious to me and then sometimes it's not uh there was one shoot where it was like, I was finishing up samples and I was just, I don't know what made me think of it, but then I thought clay, maybe I'll work with clay. You know, can and you hear that photo? Because I love that photo shoot so much. When I saw it, I think I actually gasped because I was like, oh, that's such a smart idea for you to be using uh, material to prop. I was, I was like basically scrambling. My, my primary focus was I need to finish my samples and I was, designing and then in the process sort of like had another one of our production girls who was working in the studio and I turned around to her and I just said like do you think I can buy clay next door because she was a member <laughs> right because your name is your family studio um, yeah blue and so we went over there and I just kind of looked at the different types of clay that were available to see if any of them would be complimentary. And then we started just cutting off slabs of it, which created some like, you know, it was gonna give us height, first of all, in some way to start right. stacking things, but then could also get like, we were finding in the process, it was giving some, some like edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that's like, I guess difficult about like talking about the planning process for me is like, I will think of something and test it out. And most of it is just in the process of figuring out what that material can do for you. So I am never a hundred percent committed to anything. I am just basically coming to the table every single time for these photo shoots with a number of ideas. And I think, let's try it. Like right. we'll try two or three shots. And with the photographer, obviously I work with a couple of photographers primarily, Asia Steve and then Melissa Haybegger. Those are like the two two women that I've worked with for several years now. And so they know my needs for the most part. And they'll look at it and just like give me their inputs and thoughts. And then from there, and I'll look at it too and compare in terms of like just figuring out how things look and then figure out really how I can build from there. And it's, it's not great if you need some, if you really need to build out a lot of those objects then when you're working that, with that material. But if there are a few things that you can do and really manipulate it in a variety of ways, then you've got so much room and freedom to run. And so my process is usually like, like it's in, I, it's like constantly like I'm, I'm figuring things out as I go. Yeah. Um, so the clay was like, you know, we're cutting it and I was seeing just these different shapes emerge or these different sort of cuts emerge unintentionally because it was like some of it, I couldn't cut straight and it was just going to spew. And so it was creating like, you know, like a tapered, tapered width or thickness. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that was, you know, that was really interesting. So I don't have any of them digital, but I. No, I'm going to share my screen because I. Then, also, oh, you've I, got them on the website? Yeah, I found on your site. Let me share my yeah. screen. We can all see. That's good. Okay. Can you see it? I can see it. Okay. Wait, do you see my whole screen or just the? I see your, um, just, yeah. I see your, just like your web browser. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So this is that I felt like these images and seeing that clay was such, it, it was so smart and I felt like it was such a great way of, of using a raw material. Cause I feel like that's super important. Um, I also love this lookbook. Is this, is this the one where it's, um, is it your second one? Probably that one. Yes. These are some of my favorite. And what is this material exactly? So yeah, like this wasn't a material that I had ever purchased thinking it would be complimentary for my product. It was actually, they're candles. So oh. the, it's like beeswax and it's like these beeswax candles that are rolled up. I actually bought this Whenever I go and visit our stockists, I like to shop with our stockists. So we were at Dreads in Olympia, Washington, just like right, yeah. where I grew up actually. And they sell these like really lovely candles, like these beeswax rolled up candles. And I bought some of those. And you know, the morning of the shoot, again, the morning of, I was scrambling around downstairs in our basement. We've got like kind of a rack of lots of just stuff and just trying to figure out like, what can I work with? What can I work with? And I sort of like looked at that and thought there was potential and started unrolling basically the, yeah. the candles. And it just like, it produced the sort of, it's like kind of translucent, which I really love for my product. It's like mm -hmm. working with things that are semi-translucent and it's got a softness to it. Um, but it's, it's also weird because it was kind of, it could have been difficult because of that honeycomb grid, which, right. you know, no, it can, I think it, it can it, be it, weird, but it like, it worked out in this case. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And to be honest, I feel like a lot of the times whenever, um, to think about when you are purchasing props for your own photo shoots, things that hit light really like either it makes it softer or like personally, like my stylist loves using glass, Genevieve. She loves using glass and water and she's always trying to figure out yeah ways to do that and I'm always just like I personally like I I understand it because when we actually have the shoots and they come out I'm like oh that's beautiful but in like sometimes you just kind of have to like uh, what we do at least for our process or my process for, for a photo shoot in general is I just go through and I find the photos I think are beautiful and then I look to see what makes it look like that and then we're, I'm able to kind of go and shop and like, I go to a variation of places, like you're saying, like you just shop as you go. And I definitely do that as well. Like just to find props in that, you know, but like, since mine are very specific, um, per the theme of that photo shoot, like I'll go to like, I don't know, urban or that's a place here in Oakland. That's like essentially just like a dump. <laughs> but like a thrift store but with a bunch of other stuff like they just have like broken toilets and like <laughs> like a bunch of different things like that and like a, like there's this giant marble piece that I was able to get for that specific shoot um that was like a part of a, a like toilet I think or something so but like yeah just like being really creative about what you're how you're looking for those props and how like they will elevate your pieces, but also probably, you know, not outshine them like, like these candle. Cause I think this is such a great one. That you and there's, a, there's this other prop in there, which. These guys? Is like that green block. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's soap, right? Like those are like yeah. these soap blocks from Bino Bino. <laughs> it's a really expensive soap. And <laughs> I bought that. I bought that thinking of oh, those, they'll make great props for right for jewelry and i i actually don't think it's true i mean i think it worked in this case but this is my second or third attempt trying to force it to work right so there are some things that you buy with the intention um with the idea that it's going to be it's going to be so easy to work with it's going to be so nice and it's like it's not it's not always obvious um this is like yeah this is literally the third attempt of trying to like make it work for something and i think 
the combination of things like it did in this case. Yeah, definitely. All right. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a second. All right. But yeah, so I, I mean, you do an amazing job, like I mentioned, of being able to talk about, you know, I mean, you're really delicate. The pieces are so delicate. I can only imagine. I know that draping is a huge portion of it too. So um, last question I want to ask is, I mean, I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but like, um, do you have any tips or tricks other than like, other than the ones that you've mentioned for styling or anything like that? Um, I mean, it's always handy to have water on hand. I do, I do like that you mentioned Genevieve loves water. She loves water. It's, um, the water. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a lookbook shoot that she helped with that's like got some water element on there too. Um, I don't know. with with the tips that I would recommend in terms of styling is to have extra things on hand just to just to balance it out and I think you want to think in advance too a little bit in terms of like how many products like what products do you need shot and which ones need to be together and which ones like need their own happy like focal shots and um, that's the part I guess I didn't cover earlier in terms of just like planning it out as like what shots do you actually need? Yeah. Uh, what shots are like critical to need? Like be it like a specific variant, a specific design, the designs in all of the colors. It's very helpful to know that stuff in advance, um, to plan that out, to have that proper checklist to go through that. Yeah. And most, but most the, photographers need shot lists anyway. So I think, yeah. Um, I mean, that's like in the past, that's how I'm even able to plan that out as well is because I'm making the shot list for the photographer and then yeah. for me to, it's also helping yeah. me out of knowing what needs to be shot. Yeah. And the thing in terms of like your final presentation of all the photos, you don't want them all looking the same. So it, it becomes this thing where it's like, oh, you found this one way to use that material and it's wonderful. You've you laid, like laid a pair of earrings on it. And you're like, this is great. Um, and, but unfortunately you only get to use it once really like you could keep putting other product on it but that's that's not what you ultimately want you want to have the continuity of that that like that one material that you've used that you're working with and either have it intersecting in different ways or like rolled up in different ways you want to and if you do use different materials that look different you still need to figure out how they're all going to come together and work together right um, because in the end with that final photo shoot if you're trying to create cohesion and also just like bring focus onto the product and it's it's distinctiveness then you also have to do that with the photo itself yeah yeah definitely um and i i feel like you know if when you are doing your photography um just yeah just think about like you're saying the cohesiveness of it because I mean, when you're looking at it as a set, like I just showed the ones on your site, like that's how people are going to be exploring it as well. You know, like they're going to be looking that on your website and they're going to see these photos and they're all going to look a very certain way. And I think it's going to be um, important for it to have that cohesiveness. Yeah. But yeah, well, um, thank you so much for being able to, to come on and chat with us about, um, about your photography and how you're able to do it and working with different um, photographers. Um, does anyone have any last minute you know, questions about um, photography that you'd like to ask Christine or me? feel free in the chat to ask us <laughs> and then other than that do you have are you promoting anything or are you part of anything right now christine that you'd like to talk about um we are releasing a new collection so we've got a new collection called seasons coming up it's actually really pretty colorful and bright in terms of like i think different than what people expect for the fall but i think i think for this year i think everyone needs a little bit of color therapy so we're launching that pretty soon and then I think we're trying to clear out some old stuff, so we're going to have a sale pretty soon, too. So, I don't know. Sign up for the mailing list if you're interested. Yeah. And Maria has a question. Do you want to read it? Yeah, do sure. I... Um, she asks, how far in advance do you plan for your styled shoots? Yeah, like, 
morning. <laughs> so, uh, no, you mean you can't No, be but in terms of planning and setting a date, it's quite bad also. Like, I, I am an awful person to work with in that <laughs> I don't provide that much notice to anybody. Um, but, you know, my, I think the photographers I typically work with, they know that too. And so I, I try to usually schedule it within like two weeks from when I initiate and I say like, I need this in like a couple of weeks. Can we do this? And when I have samples ready, I'm just like, I'm ready to go. And sometimes I don't have samples completely ready, but I know they'll get there in time. Um, but basically I'm like working up to just like get it done probably within, within two weeks. I don't know how to, I don't know how to plan beyond that when it comes to photography and photo shoots and even designing new work. Yeah. Me. I mean, okay. So the difference between, I guess. You chip away maybe, but I can't, I, I can't, I got to complete it all. Like do the bulk of it in a short period of time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then personally for myself, when I'm styling sh or when I'm doing a, a big style shoot, like I said, I do it once a year. So I probably start really planning about three months in advance. And that includes finding a photographer, getting the inspiration for the shoe, um, and then obviously getting all the props for that specific shoe. And then the actual shoot itself for those six images, like I said, sometimes run two days. So it's a, a lot more of like an intense, intense thing. Um, Alyssa Frick also has another question. She asks, what is your source of inspiration for style shoots? For either of us. Oh, also I just wanted to say, Melanie does really long shoots. I've learned over time, I don't have the endurance for it. Um, I get really tired and it starts to reflect in the photos themselves and the styling and all of it. I try to limit my photo shoots to like two, three hours. These are short blocks, be it for, for model shoots even, we try not to go over four. It's just, it's too exhausting. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like, I actually, I just can't, I can't do it. I know that about myself. And so now whenever we try to do this, we try to do it in short, like sprints. Right. And then we, then we wrap it up. Um, the full day shoot is like, it works for some people and it's it, sometimes it's just totally necessary, but it's not, it's not for me. Um, I, so I just want to share that because I think that's <laughs> important to know. Um, yeah. And then so your uh, inspiration for style shoots? Where, how do you, where, how do you find it? I mean, some of it is literally like, I'm just like looking around you're scrounging through things. If you're going to urban or like, sometimes I'm literally like, it depends on how much time there is. Sometimes I run down to Chinatown and I look for materials, but the balance too, in terms of, we're going to talk about tips as well as I like working with materials. So it feels like materials instead of objects. If I can find something where I can obscure it, so you don't know what it is, that's better. Like I, will usually run around looking for things that it's like no one can probably tell what this is up close like no one can probably tell what this is you know I, I like just i don't want like real objects and things so i usually run around just like scanning for either like colors that i might have an interest in or just like again like translucency anything that has like some sort of translucency to i get excited about and something that holds volume too that i know will like won't just sit flat um so i like i like to look around sometimes i look on instagram but it's really not yeah it's not, cool. it's not like, see it's so funny so for me personally for like my for for source for inspiration for me it's definitely instagram oh. <laughs> like, i will go through and i will like i will find it because there's always so many instagrams specifically that's like for inspiration because yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie, like, because it, these photo shoots have to fill so many different boxes of, like, what I need, um, I am thinking, I need this to be on trend. I need this to be, like, a specific color that's on trend. I need it to be all these things. So I'll do all my research beforehand, and I generally pile them all up on Pinterest. And then Pinterest generally gives me a ton of different things also to look at, and um, there's something to different types of photographers or types, types of styles that I'll look at. And then I'll be like, okay, I like that. I want to emulate that, but obviously it's like through my own eyes and then I can kind of do yeah. it. That way. But that's definitely the vibe yeah. I have. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's probably unfair for me to say that it's like unhelpful because there is one thing that I do on Instagram, which is for model shots, I, I definitely go to Instagram to see how things they get do framed it, yeah. and how I like 
them because that's obviously the easiest to tell other people to communicate it to other people like models, stylists, um, photographers, particularly when it comes to working with people. And then also I like looking to see how sometimes people are able to set things up. But the reality is with, with jewelry, ours is so different in terms of like how it drapes, how it lays. Right. That there aren't that many strong reference points that I can use. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't, I know what my jewelry needs and I just run around hoping I'm going to hit, find something that can, can do it for it. Right. And on that note of models, Matthew just asked, could you talk a little bit about hiring and working with models? Cause I'm actually curious about that too. I don't really have any people in my shoots, but, um, I would be curious to know that. Um, there, there are a variety of different ways you can go about it. Obviously like you can go on Instagram and hunt down, look really? for models. Um, if you know people who are like naturally photogenic, who like who are comfortable behind the camera. I mean, I think that's great because that's, I think a lot of us, is, I think there are a lot of people who aren't looking for like really commercial looks for, with models. And it's great if you can have, if you have a friend like Melanie, <laughs> honestly, it was like really photogenic. Um, and it, it's helpful though. It, it's really incredibly helpful to have people who are just comfortable behind the camera. But the other thing is like, you need to have somebody who's comfortable behind the camera and who the photographer works very well with. I've had the best experience in terms of models and photographers when the photographer has chosen the model. So you don't really have a good experience or you do the best. The best outcome is when the photographer has already worked with that model right. and already knows how like, you know, just like knows how they work. Um, we do a number of model shoots, maybe like one a year. I found it really difficult oftentimes to like find a lot of, I don't know, it, it's hard to like arrange, it's like more people to arrange and yeah. you look for models sometimes. And for us, we've always, we've always looked for people of color um for the most part and it's not as easy i think it's a lot easier now but like years ago it was like not easy and i think some photographers didn't get it either in terms of like no no, no like we have to we have to like find someone and they're like <laughs> but i've got somebody and it's like yeah but like i don't like i don't it's i don't want that like i don't need to produce more of that content right um so i you know i would recommend having your photographer, the, the photographer you trust, you like working with to make their recommendations. Um, sometimes they don't want to though. So then it's, you know, you got to figure it out. Right. But and I know that there's websites, right? Instagram, you can message people. There are a lot of people who do want to do that. For, like, just right. Yeah. For trade, for barter, for an hourly rate, that isn't insane. Um, but hiring models is quite expensive if you go through agencies. Um, yeah. And it's, it may not always be the look you're going for either. So. Right. Yeah. No and I think uh, a lot of, and, ju and just to, to really kind of um, rem remind everyone, you know, to just work off of like, like remember your brands. Cause like, obviously like you just mentioned people of color is what you want your models to be like whoever you're choosing to represent. Cause they're the person that's going to be maybe not the face, but they are a representation of like, what your brand is going to be as well so i think that's really important because if you know i know that you don't have a ton of photos of yourself but you obviously want people to to know that you know that, that that's like yeah the version of you i mean i think it's just like it's it's the content you put out it's, just, it's in terms of just like if there's content that you're disseminating what kind of stuff do you want like what do you want out there if you're producing it you're putting all that energy and investment into it um it's like what content do you think needs to exist no, totally. And you want it to be unique. You don't need to, you also want it to be different. You don't need everything to look the same. And that's why you spend, you know, I think that's why we spend so much time like figuring out materials that we work with, that like, everything is ideally, like, ideally thought through, even though I know my process doesn't seem particularly thought through. No, it's I know just, you do though. It's just like, <laughs> just bombing at the end, but it just, yeah. you know, it comes together somehow. Right. Yeah. 
Well, um, thank you. Thank everyone for, for joining in on the talk. I'm going to upload this again on YouTube. So if there was something specific that Christine or I said and you want to go back to it, you can follow it up there. Um, you can follow Christine at Abacus Row on Instagram and you can get on her website, abacusrow.com, right? Mm -hmm. And um, me, myself, I'm at Melanie Bronson Designs, and my um, join obviously is hosting this and there at Join Design. And don't forget, we do have a wholesale trade show that's coming up on September 22nd through 25th. So if you are a buyer of any chance or know of any buyers, let them know about it because we want more people to come. All right. Well, thank you guys again, and it was so great to see everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. Bye. Okay, I'm ending the call. <laughs> Bye, Christine. Bye.